What's going on and happy Father's Day. I don't know when you're getting this, but you should be happy about your father all year long. Listen, we had a dynamic service on today. We talked from the subject title, from walking to skipping. It talks about Enoch, who was a father. Enoch was a father, but the greatest thing he gave his family was a walk with the Lord. That was his whole legacy. In fact, the Bible says that he walks with God so closely that he skips completely over death. I believe the same applies to us, that when we walk with God, we're able to skip over things that other people are trapped in. I want to encourage you to go check out the message in its entirety. I know it's going to bless you. I also want to thank everyone who has subscribed, who has followed, who has commented, and everybody who has joined Evangel Nation. Thank you. Our family is constantly growing, and we're glad that you're a part. Thank you for connecting with us as we connect with God, others, and purpose. I pray you're having a blessed day. Make sure you check us out. And if it blesses you, share it immediately. Help us to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out to a dying world. God bless you. and We'll see you soon. Peace. I invite your attention. I want to invite your attention to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5 through 6. I'm going to read from the message translation. Thank you, brothers, for helping me. It reads, by an act of faith, Enoch skipped death completely. They looked all over and couldn't find him because God had taken him. We know on the basis of reliable testimony that before he was taken, he pleased God. It's impossible to please God apart from faith. And why? Because anyone who wants to approach God must believe both that he exists and that he cares enough to respond to those who seek him. I want to take a few moments just to talk from the subject title, Walking to Skipping. Walking to Skipping. Walking to Skipping. You know, there's so many hymns that are out there on today. And one of my favorite ones is, And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I'm his own. But sometimes walking can be a challenge. In fact, fatherhood has shown me the stages of walking. You know, my daughter Paige has taught me a lot. I've seen her grow and develop over the last eight months going on nine, and she started off sitting, started off sitting. I mean, we were so amazed that she could sit up all by herself without being propped. It showed her muscle development and her ability to care for herself. And then she went from sitting to now She wakes us up every morning standing. She pours herself up in the crib and she stands. She she no longer likes to sit. She likes to stand. She stands every opportunity she has. But what I realize is that standing comes right before walking. Can I help somebody? I believe God operates the same way, that before he allows progress to hit your life, first of all, you have to learn how to stand. And so now, she is standing, and we believe that the next phase will be walking. Yeah, walking is going to be a day of rejoicing. Some people are concerned about walking because sometimes when you have a child, they walk places you don't want them to walk. So you miss the days of old when all they could do was crawl and sit. But watch this. Walking includes succinct steps. Walking is intentional, repetitive steps that move us forward. So our creator is interested in walking with us. In fact, when we read Genesis, it was God that walked with Adam in the cool of the day. And you're only going to walk when crawling is no longer enough. Some of you are at that point now where you're saying, I'm tired of crawling. 
when, when you can't find joy and satisfaction out of scooting any longer, then perhaps you're ready to walk. And some of us are frustrated because we watched everybody else, and it seems like they're getting from point A to point B, and we're stuck in a situation. Maybe it's time for you to walk. Out of all the things the Bible says that faith affords us, affords us the opportunity to do, the Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight. And so faith causes us to make progress that we would be unable to make otherwise. I want you to know this. Uh, sometimes frustration is the reason you're going to walk. It was those lepers who got frustrated in the state that they were in, and Jesus says, go show yourself to the priests. I want you to know that when you're really walking in faith, that nothing can stop your progress. Even valleys can't stop your progress. The Bible says in Psalms 23 that, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. So even the low places can't stop my progress. I came to preach to somebody that feels like you're stuck right now. I want you to know that no matter how low you are, it can't stop your progress. I love Jesus because Jesus doesn't just walk on water, but if you look at the context, Jesus walks through a storm. Can I, can I help you? Some of you are explaining or excusing yourself from making progress because of the storm that you're in. But the truth of the matter is, if you're walking by faith, you can still make progress in the storm. Your money may be funny and your change may be strange, but you can still make progress in the middle of a storm. Look at somebody say, I'm going to make progress in this storm. I want you to know also that you can walk through fire. We learned that on last week, that even the fire can stop you from making progress. Some of us have allowed the circumstances and the elements that we're facing to keep us from making progress. Can I help somebody? You can make progress if you're married and you got the traditional household, or you can make progress if you're a single parent. You just got to believe in the God that believes in you and walk by faith and not by sight. Can I help you? You, you, you can make progress if you have a doctoral degree, or you can make progress if you have a GED. You, you just need the grace of God on your life. Uh, you, you can make progress with two parents, or you can make progress with no parents. The Bible says, when my mother and father forsake me, that's when the Lord will take me up. Can I help you? The reason they had to take their hands off of you so God could put his hand on you. I'm preaching better than you saying amen. Look at somebody say, we're making progress this year. We're making progress this year. No excuses. We're making progress on this year. God has some great things in store for us, and I'm not going to let what I see keep me from making progress. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. I know what some of you are saying. Some of you are saying, Pastor, I got an injury, and my injury is keeping me from walking. Come here, Jacob. Jacob has a limp because he's wrestled with God all night long, and God touches his leg. And Jacob says, I'm not going to even allow my limp to keep me from making progress. I came here to tell you that even when you have weaknesses, the Bible reminds us that God's strength is perfected in our weakness. And I want you to know you can still make progress with your limping self. Oh, I feel like preaching for a second. I, I said you can still make progress with your limping self. You don't have to give up. You don't have to give in. You can keep on making progress. I want you to know that even when all you have is broken pieces, you can still get to the shore if you trust God and never doubt. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path. Can I get a witness if anybody has ever made progress while having a lip? You had less than what you thought you needed, but somehow God made a way. Somehow God opened the door. Somehow God worked a miracle, and I'm a living testimony. Could have been dead and gone, but the Lord allowed me to live on. Why don't you high five somebody and say, you can make it, you can make it. I don't even need the musicians. You can make it. This trial you're going through, God's going to show you what to do. 
Some of us allow our obstacles to keep us from making progress. From making progress. When you're walking by faith, you can walk through doors. You can walk through walls. When you're walking by faith. Look at somebody say, we're going to get through this. We're going to get through this. I don't know why all these songs coming up in my mind. With Jesus on our side, things that will work out fine. We're going to make it. We're going to get through this. Anybody ever walk through some tough places? Anybody ever walk through some hard places? Anybody ever walk through some things that you thought you were going to die in, but somehow God stepped in the middle of your trouble and he brought you out without a doubt? you got to give God some glory and praise if that's your testimony. A lot of people talk, but you only get in the hall of faith if your walk matches your talk. Look at somebody say, I'm not going to just talk my talk. I'm about to walk my talk this year. Let me help you. I said, I'm not going to just talk my talk this year. I'm going to walk my talk this year. Because talking is not enough. I've got to align my feet with what comes out of my mouth. Because I believe God is able to do it. And my feet are proof I believe what God said. So, we got to walk. I talk. I love this because when you look at the text, you understand that Enoch, Enoch, Enoch was the seventh in the line of Seth. The reason the Bible makes this very clear is because there are two Enochs. Cain also produces an Enoch, but he is not the seventh in line of Seth. You have to understand that Jesus comes through the line of Seth, not the line of Cain. This means that you could have the same name and not be the same person. Can I preach to somebody? Because you got some family members um, that share your same last name, but they don't share your same anointing. They don't share your same passion. They don't share your same goal. And I came here to tell you that just because we have the same name does not mean we are the same. God has done something great in my life. You can label me this, but I can, I'm going to overcome because God is on the inside of me. And greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. The Bible says I'm more than a conqueror. You can't even label me by race. You you can't label me by my socioeconomical status. Yes, we have the same name, but we are not the same. I got the Holy Spirit on the inside of me, and he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. We are not the same. Similar, but we are not the same. We work for the same company, but we are not. I'm from a different line. I'm from the line of Melchizedek. I'm from a different line. I'm from the line of Seth. I'm from a different line. I'm from a line when everybody thought it was all over. Somehow Adam and Eve conceived again and produced the Seth. I'm from a different line. This is why I can't fail because I come from a line who understands that God can pick you up. I come from a line that says that God will never fail you because whatever's born of God overcomes the world, even our faith. I'm from a different line, got the same name, but I'm from a different line. Watch your prophesy to somebody say, don't, don't judge me by my name because God can change my name at any moment. He can change my name from Abram to Abraham. He can change my name from Sarah or Sarah to Sarah. He can change my name from Saul to Paul. He can change my name from Simon to Peter. God can change my name. So don't judge me by my name. Can I get a witness that God will change your name? So even though you have the same name, you got to know what line you're from. He was the seventh in line. God uses Enoch to complete some things. And I came in to prophesy to you that God's going to use you to complete some things, that God's going to bring some completion in your life before the end of 2024. There's been some stuff that's been left open, but I believe God's going to bring closure to it before the end of 2024 because he's able. Yeah, just because we had the same name. Doesn't mean we're the same. 
We both single, but we not the same. I'm from a different line. We both broke, but my brokenness is temporary. We, I'm from a different line. Yeah, we might be both sick now, but I'm from a different line that says he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon. It's not all about what's your name. Sometimes it's about what line you're standing in. And so he is the seventh in the line. A set. Yeah. And so this man, all he does, all he does is walk. He's a prophet too, but he walks his talk. He's in the hall of faith because he walked. And, and I want you to understand this, that you do not rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your habits, according to James Clear. Did you hear me? You don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the levels of your habits. See, the reason we don't like walking is because walking seems redundant. The reason we don't like walking, because walking is boring. At least he would allow me to run. Walking seems boring. And yet, this man by the name of Enoch waits until he's 65 to start walking for 300 years. Some of you can't walk for 300 seconds. I know because I've seen you at the gym. But the truth of the matter is, Enoch walks. For 300 years, walking for 300 years, nothing fancy, just walking for 300 years. He's not like Samson, he doesn't have strength, unspeakable, he just walks for 300 years. He doesn't get to go to Egypt like Joseph and be second in command, all he does is walk for 300 years. He doesn't get to get into a lion's den and let God shut the mouth of a lion, all he does is walk for 300 years. He doesn't get the testimony that I was thrown in the fiery furnace and Jesus showed up in the fiery furnace. All he does is walk for 300 years. And some of you are bored with your life because all you're doing is walking. But I want to give you encouragement that there was a man by the name of Enoch that walked. But I want you to know that if all you're doing is walking, your walking is not in vain. That you have to understand this, that every step of a righteous man is ordered by God. That means you think you're walking, but God is counting every step you take. I feel the song about to say every move you make, God, 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 God is, is calculating every step you take because every step is ordered by the Lord. And so all Enoch does is walking. Some of you feel like my life is boring. My life is not where I thought it would be because all it seems I'm doing is walking. It's just redundant. I'm just coming in and I'm going out. I'm coming in and I'm going out. It seems like a pattern. But I want you to know that Zachariah one day in a pattern, in a routine, the truth of the matter is he shows up to the temple and God has the response to his prayer because I want you to know that when you're walking with Jesus, you're not just walking anywhere. You're about to walk into something. Once you prophesy to somebody, say, you're about to walk into something big. And I know it's dark, but you don't know how close your destination is. You're about to walk into something big. And all Enoch did was walk. Sometimes all you have to do is walk. God doesn't need something fancy from you every day. God doesn't need you to call down fire every day. There are some days God just needs you to walk. Look at somebody say, just walk. I know you don't know how he's going to heal your body, but just walk to the doctor's office. Let him say what he's going to say and still believe the report of the Lord. I, I, I know you don't like it, but sometimes you got to walk to the unemployment line and still know he's Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides all your needs. I, I want you to understand, sometimes you got to just walk. I know that your wife's not treating you right, but you still got to love the hell out of her. You, 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 got, you got to learn to keep on walking. I know your kids are still as bad as bad can be, but the truth of the, I used it in contest. The truth of the matter is um, that even though your kids are bad as bad can be, the truth of the matter is you got to still walk. You still got to love them. You still got to pray for them. You still got to be there to help clean them up when they do come back home. Sometimes all you have to do is walk. We're so busy trying to be great that we forget to walk. 
Maybe God is in the simple things. But we're trying to figure out how we're going to sprint through the, to the destination. God says, all I need you to do is walk. Some of us are out of breath because God never asked us to run. He just asked us to walk. Some of us are discouraged because we run into things we should be walking to. Because it's what you learn along the way that changes your life. And if you get there too quickly, you'll find out your destination is just a repeat of your today. Walk. Walk. That's all he did. Walk. That's all Enoch did for 300 years. How many 300-year-olds do we have here today? Uh, for 300 years. Some of you have said, all my life I had to walk. It's been slow. But you're not 300 yet. I think you got some more years in you that you can walk. So Enoch walks. And the reason we know he lived, he didn't just do something spooky and just walk with God physically every day. Because he produces children. That means he had a relationship. So even though he had relationships, he had a walk. In order to walk, you got to have balance. So he has a relationship that produces a son by the name of Methuselah. Yeah. And, and I love Methuselah. Because Methuselah is based upon the promise. God says that as long as he lives, I'm going to hold back the waters. But the day he dies, I'm going to release the flood. In other words, Methuselah had the ability to influence future generations. Methuselah, his name means a man who is shut out or thrown hard like a dart. Towards a dark boy. So I want you to understand this. That the enemy also throws darts. And this is why you have to be strategic. Because a dart does a few things. Darts always have targets. And I came in to prophesy to you that what you're about to birth, what's about to come out of your life, is going to hit its target. I know you think that all you're doing is walking, but God's going to make you productive even in your walk. The problem with many of us, we've taken a lot of shots and have not hit our target. But a dart always has a target. This time, you're going to hit it without fail. This time, you're going to be successful like you've never been successful before. Watch this. I think I love about darts. Darts stick. That means you're not going to be a... A fly by night, you're not going to just have your 15 minutes of fame that this time it's going to stick. Can I help you? I, I don't want just temporal blessings. I don't want to be up and down. I, I need some stability in my life. I, I need something that's going to stick. I, I believe some of us are not going to just have riches, but God's going to cause us to walk in our wealthy place. I, I don't just want to have a good day. I want God to heal my body completely. I want to walk in total victory. The truth of the matter is, don't stick. Could you imagine this being the last day you're sick? Could you imagine this being the last day you're broke? Could you imagine this being the last day that your marriage is on the rocks because it's moving to the rock? Can you imagine? Because the dark stick. Amen. And the problem with us, we keep on switching up because what we're doing does not stick. But this time it's going to stick. Some of us got us blessed us, and let's be honest, we got our fingers crossed behind our back because we don't know if it's going to stick. They gave you a promotion. You think they got their paperwork mixed up, so you got your fingers crossed because you don't know if it's going to stick. You, you got a relationship, and you're not sure if the relationship is going to stick because you've had 10 relationships in the last five years, and none of them have stuck. They were always out by Valentine's Day. They never stuck. But I believe this. When you're walking with God, what you do sticks. I know the Bible doesn't say this, but this is very true. Only what you do for Christ will last. It sticks. I don't know about you. When I'm gone, I want what I leave behind to stick. In order for it to stick, you got to stick to it. Because watch this endurance produces endurance. And I love darts. Darts are thrown. They're able to go further than the sender. And I came here to tell you that if you believe God, that what comes out of you can go further than you. This is why you should never miss an opportunity to give God praise. Because you can send Judah first. 
That's prophetic. That means Judah can go to places that your feet hasn't gone yet. This means you can praise God on Sunday, and God can send Judah to Monday. God can send Judah to Tuesday. God can send Judah to Wednesday. God can send Judah to Thursday. God can send Judah to Friday. God can send Judah to Saturday. You can be in your present and send Judah to your future. Y'all missed that because I can see some people getting it. That's why you're opening your mouth. Because you know you got a tough week up ahead. But if you learn how to send Judah, God can go ahead of you and begin to make the way easy. Because God doesn't just have your back. He has your front. We are led by God. I came in to tell you that if you got a praise, it'll stick and it'll go places you can't go. I want you to know that Paul and Silas were bound. All night, but they prayed and praised. And even though they couldn't reach the doors, their praise could reach the doors. And when their praise reached the doors, the doors in the jail opened. I came here to tell you that some of you don't know how to knock on the door spiritually. You don't knock on the door with your fist. You knock on the door with your praise. Some of y'all missed your moment during the praise and worship. You should have been singing, who are you, great mountain? Because some of y'all dealing with some great mountains. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I said, some of you should have been saying, who are you, great mountain? Who are you, great cancer? Who are you, great debt? Who are you, great depression? You got to come down because I know who I serve. And my praise is a weapon. Look at somebody say, my praise is a weapon. I've been quiet long enough, but this is my seventh lap. And I believe when I give God praise this time, those walls that seem insurmountable, they're about to come down. If you know it, even though it doesn't sound good, I need you to open your mouth and give God some praise. Y'all praising God like y'all expecting favor in the upcoming week. You praising God like you expecting him to do some miracles in the upcoming week. You praising God like you looking for your promotion in the upcoming week. You praising God like you looking for your family to come home in the upcoming week. I've learned to send out some darts. Because when the enemy throws darts at me, I learn how to return it back to the sender. Because what the enemy meant for evil, I know God can turn it around. I need some people with degrees to give God some praise. Because my degree won't get me the victory. But the Lion of Judah shall break every chain and give to us the victory again and again. Y'all missed it. I said the Lion of Judah will break every chain and give us the victory once. Look at your name and say, again. Here I go again. Believe in God. Take that, devil. I gotta stop, I gotta stop, I gotta stop. Y'all gotta be out here now. So watch this, I can be standing here and yet, address there. He says, send Judah first, because Judah's a dart. Some of y'all going to work without sending Judah first. That's why you take on the attitude of the culture, because you didn't send Judah first. Some of y'all going to job interviews you haven't prayed about, and you definitely didn't send Judah Judah can open up doors that your resume can't. I believe David was promoted not only just for his skill, but because of his worship. Somebody say, send Judah first. I got to move. I got about five minutes to get it done. Please be seated. But you got to send Judah First, he sends Methuselah further than he ever could go. This man, Enoch, is dead, but Methuselah lives 
for 969 years. Because when you last, what you produce will last. And then Methuselah sees Noah, which means comfort, because I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, we see begging. You think your walk is just affecting you. Your walk is affecting your seed. So watch this. What's the name of the title of the message? From walking to skipping. From walking to skipping. I love the text. Because the text suggests, because he not walked, the Bible says he skipped death completely. How many people do you know that skipped death completely? There are some things you'll skip in life just from walking with God. That's why it seems slow. That's why it seems like things are not moving, but if you keep walking with God, he'll give you the grace to skip stuff completely. There's some stuff that should have hit your life, but because you were walking with God, he gave you the grace to skip it completely. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we're about to skip this year. And I know it's Father's Day and men don't skip, but this man is going to skip. I'm believing God to give us the grace to skip things because we walk with him. Because somebody say, from walking to skipping, from walking to skipping, from walking to skipping. I don't know when God's going to turn it around. I don't know when God's going to make it away. But if I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle, he'll give me the grace to skip over some things that got other people. When you walk with God, you experience heaven on earth. Watch this. He gets to experience heaven without dying. Because he walked with God. I came here to tell somebody that God's about to give you a foretaste of heaven. That even though it seems like you're going through hell, that if you keep on walking with God, he's about to give you a foretaste. Some of you say, I don't need money, but he'll give you joy unspeakable. He'll give you peace that surpasses all understanding. I want you to know if you keep on walking with God, he'll give you a foretaste of heaven. This is why some people are looking at you and don't understand why you got a praise on your mouth, why you still got a smile on your face. It's because I'm walking with Jesus. It's not what I'm walking through, it's who I'm walking with. And because I'm walking with him, I got joy. Because in his presence, there's fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures evermore. I can experience heaven on earth. Look at somebody say, I'm about to skip that. I'm about to skip that. I should be crying, but I'm smiling. Because I skipped that cry. Because I've been walking with Jesus. Why don't you prophesy to the enemy and say, miss me with that, miss me with that, miss me with that. I came in to prophesy to somebody. You're about to go into a season of acceleration. God's about to allow you to skip because you won't. You've been faithful over little. So God's about to make you ruler over much. Because you won't, you're about to skip. Some of you thinking you're running out of time, but I came in a prophesy to you. We serve a God that knows how to redeem the time. You're about to skip because you won't. I came to prophesy that God's delay is not his denial. You think you're running out of time, but God's going to make the sun stand still. He's going to cause you to skip over some things that you thought you were going to be stuck in. Watch your prophesy to somebody and say, get ready to skip. Get ready to skip. Skip to my loot, my darling. Get ready to skip. Where I am this year, I won't be next year. I'm getting ready to skip. Can I prophesy to somebody? You about to skip over one tax bracket. To another tax bracket. You about to skip over sickness. To healing, God is able. I told you, get ready to skip. Get ready to skip. Skipping is when God allows 
want you to pick up the pace. Can I prophesy? When you walk with God, He knows how to change your address. That's why I came to show forth the praises of Him who brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. I came to tell you that if you walk, you can skip. I came to prophesy to the angel. We getting ready to skip. This is only for the faithful people. This is only for the faithful people. This is only for the faithful people. There should be a devourer coming your way. But because you tithe, he said, I will rebuke the devourer for your name. He said, you're about to skip some stuff that should take you over. He said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over. You're about to skip some stuff because you've been walking with God. I need a real man to find another real man and say, get ready to skip. I know it doesn't make sense. I know you look goofy, but that's just the way your life's going to look. People are going to be scratching their head when they see what God brings you out of and what God brings you into. I need a sister to find another sister and say, get ready to skip. I know you've been single for a long, long time, but get ready to skip. You're only going to date for two months and God's going to do it because you're going to skip some steps because you've been walking with God. Don't judge my next year based upon this year because God never consults my past to determine my future. I'm getting ready to skip. You've been laughing at me because I've been walking. You've been laughing at me because it's been slow. But I'm getting ready to skip. I'm not going to just work for the business. I'm about to own the business. I'm getting ready to skip. Because Joseph was walking with God. Joseph skipped from the prison to the palace. I came in a prophecy out of you that when you walk with God, no time spent with God will go unrewarded. And I came in a prophesy to you, prepare to skip. You about to go from a bus to a bit and get ready to skip. From living with your mama to owning a development, get ready to... Tripping over pennies, you about to get to dollars. Get ready to skip. Look at somebody say, I can't trip in this season. I'm getting ready to skip. I can't trip. I'm getting ready to skip. I'm getting ready to skip. I'm getting ready to skip. Don't you grow weary and well doing? Because you're going to reap it. If you faith not, get ready to skip. I gotta go. I see your mother, mother skipping. I love to see the older people skip. But they learn how to skip with pain in their body. They learn how to skip with aches and pains. You can't let nothing keep you from the destination God has called you to because God is able. Hold on, hold on, I feel something prophetic happening. Can I get everybody 60 and up just to skip? The devil told you it was over. The devil told you it was too late. But I want you to skip. I want you to skip. You feel like God has looked over you. But God says skip. You about to skip over some stuff.
Well, somebody say, I'm not a stepping stone. I'm a skipping stone, too. It's hard to skip and still be angry. It's hard to skip. It's hard to skip and not feel childish. You know what that's prophetic? Because some of you haven't skipped in years. Enoch hadn't skipped for 300 years. But on the 300th year, he skips death. And if Enoch can skip death, don't you know I can skip death? Hold on. Can I give y'all the notes while y'all standing? Not like, man, he just pleased. I came for teaching. Here's your teaching. Listen, if you're going to walk with God, number one, you got to agree with the path. That's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it's destruction. Agree with the path. Number two, agree with the pace. This is why you're going to need patience. You're going to need patience because you got to agree with the pace. Sometimes God's walking too fast for you, and sometimes God is walking too slow for you. You got to agree with the pace. And then you got to agree with the place. You gotta agree with the place. Jeremiah says, For I know the thoughts I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a hope and an expected end. Yeah. So agree with the pace, agree with the path, and agree with the place. 